The Travels of Merry Boy. Two night incidents, actual interesting experiences from the lives of Ward customers, brought to you with the friendly greetings of Montgomery Ward. Our story opens today in the home of Pete Daly, who, you remember, believes that things that were good enough for his father are good enough for him and his family. Mrs. Daly, however, believes that children should have a happy Christmas, regardless of what their grandfather believed. So she asked Mary to help her convince Pete. But Mary doesn't seem to be very successful. Pete has just finished telling her what he thinks of Christmas and people who go around talking it up. Just listen. Of course, I don't blame you none, Miss Ward. You're working for Montgomery Ward. But if I buy a lot of stuff for my kids for Christmas, that means more business for Ward. Pete, ain't you ashamed? Miss Ward, you got a right to walk right out of this house and never set foot in it again. Uh, no, Mrs. Daly, I won't do that. I'll come to see you as long as you need me and want me to come. I, I ask you to excuse me, Miss Ward. Well, I think so. Oh, I guess I just lost my temper for a minute there, but all this foolishness about Christmas. We ain't never had Christmas. Why should we have it this year? My folks didn't have Christmas when I was a kid. We was too poor. And we got raised up all right. What was good enough for me is good enough for my kids. I ain't a-going to do it. Pete, I ain't never set myself again you. And I ain't setting myself again you now. But you ain't had the kids talk like I have. They don't talk before you like they do me. They're scared of you. What's they afraid of? You, that's what. Because they know everything they want you'll be again. Like you was again this here heater till Dr. Langdon scared you into buying it. Now you say yourself it's like summer in here all the time. And nobody sets by it any more than you do. Sure. Gotta have heat. Huh. Cheaper than doctor's bills. But buying toys and knickknacks. Stuff it ain't no good. Just throwing money away, that's what it is. Ain't throwing money away if it makes kids happy and makes them love their home and gives them something happy to think about after a while when they're big. Hmm. They don't hang on to you when we go into town like they do to me, looking in the store windows, pointing and whispering. Hmm? You ain't seen them, how they look when other kids tell them about what they got for Christmas and what Santa Claus brung them. Now, kids is too big to believe in Santa Claus. The two little ones ain't. The baby, she asked me yesterday... Auntie, was he coming to our house like he did to other people's houses? What'd you tell her? Nothing. I went out. I, I couldn't talk. What could I tell her? I was thinking about what I went through with the others when they was her age. They hear the other kids talk. Why can't our kids hold up their heads like the rest? Hold up their heads? What you talking about, Amy? Ain't I got the best farm in this country? Of course you have. That's just it. Your kids has got to stand up under folks knowing their fowls too mean and too stingy to give them Christmas. Look here. There can't be no woman living talk to me like that. Don't you do Let him. What do I care? I ain't never turned on you before, Pete Daly. You know I ain't. I've lived with you when you was poor. I've bore your kids, some of them without even a doctor. That was before your pa died and left you this farm. You never earned it. Not a penny of it. He gave it to you. And now you're a keeping it for yourself. You ain't spending a cent you can help on the kids you fathered. And they'll be glad when you're dead so they can get it from you. Same as you was glad when your father died and you got the place. Miss Ward, can't you stop her? She, you know she ain't fit to be crying on her. No, I've been waiting to say this for years, and I'm saying it. Thank the good Lord I'm saying it at last. This baby that's coming, what's it coming to? I could hope it'd never be born. Amy. Let me tell you one thing, Big Belly. Them kids of ours is going to have Christmas like other kids this year. I'm going to see them happy for once. I'm going to hear them laugh if I have to steal the money and go to jail for it. Amy. Yes. 
I can hear you, Pete. I ain't used to saying it, but... Never mind, Pete. It don't do no good. I said things to you just now, but maybe I shouldn't have said you, me and my husband. It all don't do no good. Maybe it will, honey. I never know yet you felt like this, so hard and bitter towards me. No, no, you didn't know. I guess I was just like the kid, scared. You don't have to be scared of me. No, Emmy. Even as a kid's neither. I don't want you to be. I guess I just growed up hard, like. I never had money to spend when I was like them. And I couldn't see no use, I guess, them having it. But when I seen you keel over just now, and I, I thought, what if all them little... I ain't colors... gonna die, Pete. I ain't the dying kind. Mm, I'd be lost, Emmy. I'm lost. I want you to know, Emmy. I, I, I know, Pete. I... I guess you can't help it. <laughs> Do you hear that, Pete? Yes, I heard it. Emmy? Yes? I, I ain't got much loose money. You know, I don't keep none much in the bank, but the kids can have Christmas. You just lay still there, Emmy, and I'll call Miss Ward. And she won't be a help in you none after the way you talk to her. Miss Ward? Yes, Mr. Daly. Yes, would you come in here, please? Uh, surely. I, I want you to know that I hate it about speaking to you the way I did. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Daly. We all say things sometimes that we don't mean. I was mad and I hate it. I... Now, what little business I do wouldn't count more than a drop of dew in a bucket with a big company like Ward's. Oh, no, that's all right. I, I ask you to excuse me, ma'am, but I want you to help me. In any way I can, Mr. Daly. I want you to show us how to have Christmas like other folks. Are we going to have Christmas, Pop, here? <clears throat> if we can, Johnny. Will we have a Christmas tree? Well, I guess maybe I can find one. I know there's one down in the creek. Us kids was looking at it when we was playing down there today. Well, if you'll show it to me after a while, I'll cut it. Well, ain't you glad, Johnny? I, I don't guess you mean it. Yes, Johnny, your daddy means it. You and the other children are going to have Christmas at your house this year. Uh, where are you going, honey? I guess I'll go out and, and tell the other kids. <clears throat> Miss Ward? Yes? Tell me what to buy them for Christmas. We could buy them good warm clothes, Pete. No, we'll do it right. I'll get the clothes, too. Here, Miss Ward, you tell us. I like the things down. All right. Now, the main thing that the children like at uh, Christmas time, Mr. Daly, is candy and lots of it. It's very inexpensive, too. You can get good candy from Wars for 12 and a half cents a pound. Uh -huh. Yes. Or if you buy five pounds, it'll only cost you 55 cents for the five pounds. I, is it in this catalog, Mr. Yes. Ward? Yes, I'll show you. You're on page 71. See? Mm -hmm. Now, if you get five pounds, I'd advise you to mix it up. A, a pound, say, of gum drops, a pound of old-fashioned chocolate drops, a pound of French creams, a pound of peanut brittle, and a pound, say, of oh, jelly beans. You know? mm, <laughs> say, how many kinds are there, Miss Ward? Twelve. I'd get a pound of each kind. Oh, my. Say, have you got any sleds in there? Yes. Uh, Joe, he made one last winter of old boards. Oh, wonderful sleds. I'll show you. They're over here on page 56. Do you want to write the page down? Yeah, better. Christmas will be here pretty quick. I ain't got much time to do this. Well, now, here's our trail breaker sled for only a dollar and 89 cents. Huh? Uh, yes, that's about half the usual price for such a sled. It has flexible steering and every other high-priced sled feature. To stand a lot of abuse and other children piling on what they're sure to do. A streamlined and a beauty. Look at it. Mm, I never had a sled when I was a boy. Well, you can ride this one, Mr. Daly, and make up for it. <laughs> and then if you want a sled for the younger children, here's our shooting star. For 98 cents only. See, it's 32 inches long and it's just right for smaller children. I'll get a couple for the little fellas. Uh, say, does Wards have any of them cowboy suits? Oh, yes. I see the kids wearing them around town. Mm -hmm. They always seem to be having a lot of fun out yes, of them. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, they're here on page 35. Look, here's a whole page of them. Yes, you can get uh, cowboy suits from 93 cents to $3.89 with shaps, vest, and belt, all decorated with bright metal medallions, pistol holster and clicker pistol, bright bandana, you know, and a lariat. The lariat comes with it? Oh, yes. You have 12 feet of manila lariat. This one at two ninety five here has a plaid cotton shirt with it. Mm. Look here, these chaps are real fur, and the hat comes with it. You see those uh, fierce mustaches? Yeah. <laughs> well, Ward uh, sent one of those free with every suit. <laughs> By golly, let me show Emmy. Look, Emmy, don't that look just like the one your Uncle Lloyd used to wear? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to get one for Johnny. Say, do the suits come that small, Mr. Oh, yes. Ward? Yes, a smaller size three and up to size 14. P. Yes, Emmy. We need 
three dogs. Oh, sure, for the girls. By golly, I'd forgotten all about the girls, thinking about them cowboy suits and them <laughs> sleds. Is there any dogs in here, Miss Ward? The dogs? Oh, my goodness, what would Christmas be without dogs? Look, pages and pages of them. I tell you what, I'll, I'll put a ring around three of them. You just take down the page number. You sure, that'll be fine. Now, for your smallest girl, I'd get on page 14. 14. Mm-hmm. Got it down. Yes, this Miller doll comes in different sizes from 11 inches tall to 19 and three quarter inches. That one would be larger than she would need now. The 13 inch would be, 13 inch one would be right after the dollar 98. I'll check that one. You see, she can't hurt it. The head uh, won't break and the body is all rubber. She can wash it or drop it in the water. Uh-huh. Nothing, yes, nothing hurts it. <laughs> Yet the doll's jointed and can stand or sit alone. Mm. It isn't dressed. But down here you can get a complete outfit of clothes for it for 47 cents. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll check that too. Uh, that's one. Now, over here on page 18 is one of the loveliest dolls, uh, fully dressed with velvet coat and hat, see? Now, this is a $3 doll that we're selling for $1.98. She has socks and shoes, 22 inches tall. She cries and goes to sleep. <laughs> now, then, on the top of the page, uh, I want you to see this one, Mrs. Daly. Oh, ain't she beautiful? Mm-hmm. A bow in her hair and a dress for clean. Yes, she's very much dressed up little lady. She's 26 and a half inches tall. She could be the grown-up sister of the other dolls, although I do have to confess that she cries. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she has, and she sleeps, too. She wears an accordion pleated organ to dress this pearl necklace and bracelet that come with her free of charge. Her white hose are rayon, and her little shoes have buckles. Oh, she's terribly dressed up, you see. Mm-hmm. 279 and a terribly low price for such a doll, Mrs. Daly. Now then, uh, you have all those pages marked down, have you? And, uh, mm-hmm. yes, and your, well, your little girls will be very proud, I can oh, tell you. that's all right. I, I'm just thinking about the money for Christmas. Uh, why, Mr. Daly, you have your credit established at Ward. You're buying that heater. Make your Christmas list, you and Mrs. Daly, and buy the whole thing on your payment plan. <laughs> well, let me hear that. Sure, Peter, I hear. It's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Say, what do you want for Christmas, Emmy? My golly, we ain't going to have anything for the kids and nothing for you. Anything you want. My new dress, maybe. Can I? Can I have anything I want? Anything in this book or I'll get the big catalog. No, Pete. I I want some of them red bells. Red bells? To hang in our windows so folks will see we got Christmas at our house, too. Red bells. <laughs> The spirit of Christmas is going to make this home a happier place for every member of the Daly family. And Christmas, my friends, is only ten days away. Now, there's still time to write Mary, and if she can help you, a letter will receive her personal attention. But you'd better write right away. Tomorrow, Mary has promised to call on her old friends, Dr. and Mrs. Petrie. The doctor, you remember, got his Christmas present, a shotgun, a few weeks ago. Or how was it? Well, anyway, we'll find out tomorrow when at the same time, Mary returns for another neighborly visit. Be sure to tune in.